Okay, so let's talk about the term and the mechanism of genetic modification. Humans have been genetically modifying plants for probably 20,000 years. And modifying them by taking plants that never would cross naturally and crossing them. Um, essentially taking sets of genetics that they don't know anything about um, and mixing them. And, and, we, and this has been what's been going on in traditional breeding and selection for about 20,000 years. Uh, and with some crops, certainly not that long. Um, maybe just in the last thousand or even in the last 500, some even the last hundreds. Um, traditional breeding is this idea of mixing genes from two different parents that have traits that you're interested in, combining those traits into something that would carry the traits of both. What GM technology allows you to do is surgically move those traits. So be able to very precisely take a trait, say for insect resistance or herbicide resistance, maybe for um, lack of browning in your product when it's exposed to air, and be able to affect just that one trait. So how do we go about this process of genetically modifying an organism, at least through the, the GMO me mechanism? So it starts in a laboratory. It's very simple these days to isolate a gene of interest. So whether it's a gene associated with disease resistance, maybe with a nutritional quality, maybe uh, something that has to do with uh, resistance to a pest. Those genes can easily be had and easily be amplified in very simple ways these days, using the same sort of technology that they use to detect if someone's been at a crime scene. It's easy to amplify a gene. And you see a lot of pictures of syringes sticking in corn cobs and tomatoes. Nothing like this at all. That's just propaganda. What we're doing is very surgical. It moves into one single cell. And then that one cell is, trans is then turned into an entire plant. That process is a whole nother art. Much more of an art than a science. But it's like the old idea where you can cut your, your uh, coleus or your basal stems, stick them in water, and have the cells on the stem turn into roots. Plant cells can do that. They can take on many fates. And if you take a single plant cell, put in your gene of interest, and put it in the right conditions, it eventually can give rise to a whole new plant where every cell contains your gene.